All right, Beth, you're ready? We are ready to go. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody. My name is Tracy Urbick, and I just wanted to go ahead and get us started on our webinar. And thank you for attending our first webinar. And we're going to feature some sustainability library projects. And this is a, essentially um, encapsulating some of the lightning round talks that have gone on over at ALA Annual just a couple weeks ago. So our agenda for the day, you can see here, well, I'm going to do some quick introductions and housekeeping in just a sec. Uh, Madeline will take over some project team updates. And we'll do a quick introduction for our lightning round speakers. After they talk, we're going to do a Q&A. And then after that, we'll have a little bit of open time, a couple of minutes for your ideas and feedback about what we can do better as sustain round, the Sustainability Roundtable. I want to first start off by thanking our online education project team, which I'm a member of, and Madeline is our, um, our fearless leader. And these are some of our other members, Arlene Hopkins, who's not able to join us today, uh, Tanya Tidline, who is helping out with the chat and will be facilitating the sections at the end, Jean Fander, who also I don't believe is able to attend today, but has been a great member of the group. We want to let you know, as Beth mentioned, that this webinar will be recorded and it will be shared. We'll send out links via the um, registration system when you register. We'll also be posting it on our website and probably putting it out on social media as well. We want to really thank Beth for helping us and moderating. She's moving the PowerPoint slide through um, and set everything up. So thank you, Beth, very much. And we also want to extend an invitation to everybody who's here and beyond to join us for our next couple of webinars that we have scheduled. So the next one, October 15th, and then following that, December 17th. So please let us know um, once, the, once the invite goes out if you'll be able to join us. And if you have any suggestions, we can talk about that at the end of the, the slides. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Madeline. Okay, can everybody hear me, I assume? I'm going to go quickly through the project updates. In terms of our governance team, well, everybody's by now heard the exciting news about the resolution passing overwhelmingly by ALA Council. That was uh, at the conference on June 28th. A big door is swinging open. We're going to see what that means uh, in terms of ALA's engagement with us and, and giving us more of a green light to go ahead with our projects. And also in terms of governance, we're in conversation with the ALA Conference Planning Committee, and there's some really great possibilities happening with greening the ALA conference. I'm not going to go into details, but just know this is happening. And moving on in terms of outreach and membership, please help us meet our goal. We want to get to 300 members by the end of 2015, and we are very close to 200 members right now. Pretty impressive for only being uh, a, a group for a year now. So get the word out. It's $10 to add Sustain RT to your membership. and. Um, ask a friend to do it as well. And in terms of the environmental scan, that link that you see there is the way that you can enter your own sustainability projects, publications, presentations, anything that you've done around libraries and sustainability, we're trying to capture it and then ultimately make a public searchable database so the world is more aware of all the amazing work that libraries are doing around sustainability. So use the link yourself, and when you find colleagues doing great work, please direct them to it as well. And finally, our online education project team, which is the one that's running this uh, very webinar. We're excited about the October 15th webinar. Probably the focus will be on equity. And then the December 17th topic is to be seen, so know that your ideas are very welcome for what another webinar might focus on. And again, share with us at the end of this, um, of this webinar when we're all chatting. And then a sort of possibility, we're looking into creating a special project team just to focus on programming. And there is already talk of some big program, bigger than what we've done so far at the Chicago 2017 Annual. With all of these, please look at the website and find the point person 
that is uh, overseeing each of these teams and get in touch if you want to be a part of it. Thank you. And that's me again. I am going to quickly introduce our three speakers. Thanks so much for joining us again. These are um, of the seven lightning rounds we had at ALA. Lisa, Uta, and Elena were willing to redo their presentations in an even shorter version, four minutes each. This will go quickly. Lisa is from Texas State University, Uta is from Oregon State University, and Elena joins us from Yakima Public Library. And I'm just going to ask Lisa to get right to it. Okay. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? All right. I'm going to go ahead and try to get this within the four minutes. Um, developing green spaces in the uh, library at Texas State University came about as part of our strategic plan that we developed in 2012, and one of our strategic themes was library spaces. And from that, the, the following key initiative evolved. It was enhancing library spaces to be welcoming destinations of choice. And so the project began with a proposal, which included the following elements, um, basically the context within the greater strategic initiative, background and scope, the estimated budget, implementation timeline, and assessment of year one. And it also included us consulting with um, our faculty from the agriculture department on, on campus in the selection of plants and containers, good locations for plants, and care and maintenance. And um, oh, through that, we actually decided to dedicate two floors to developing a dedicated green space. So some of the things that we've learned from um, our first year in implementing this is um, I'm going to share with you now. And then basically, if you have the opportunity to review uh, the student applicant pool for um, agriculture, horticulture, or biology majors, that would be great because it would be relevant for them um, to, to, to learn this experience and kind of take that with them after they leave Texas State. It's not critical, but it would help the students uh, learn the job skills that they need. And like I said, we were fortunate to be able to um, work with our agriculture faculty, and we actually have a greenhouse and a sustainable uh, sustainability farm at Texas State University. And so part of the training that our student was able to do was actually to go and get some hands-on training with the greenhouse assistants. And that, that was very valuable for them because, as it turned out, we did have a um, student who had greenhouse experience actually on Texas State, and we, we hired her, and at the very last minute, she lost her work study. And so the student that ended up getting the job last fall had no experience with plants, and so it was actually helpful for her to um, work at the greenhouse with the students. And um, she also was able to do some self-study with the um, resources that we have in the library as far as the, the collection goes. Another thing that we um, you want to think about when you're developing these green spaces is think about plants that will flourish, like in low light, because we, we decided to choose two floors. Those floors didn't have a lot of light, and so think about that and think about the plants that you choose. And you also want to think about the containers. Um, you want to keep um, choose containers that are flexible in design. We thought we had chosen the perfect res the perfect container because it had a reservoir below, and um, so we thought that would be great for watering. Well, it was great for the large plants, but we actually had some plants that were kind of smaller, and because of the shallow root systems, that reservoir design did not work well for us. And if you have um, a situation where you have to deal with pests, you also want to approach that um, immediately and really call in the professionals and, um, you know, don't, don't let it, um, I guess, turn into an infestation. We have had to deal with pests the first year, and um, a lot of this information is actually on the live guide that you'll see at the bottom of the uh, slide, and there's the full proposal there. Um, we actually had a budget of around $5,000, and so that was why we actually developed a, a full-fledged uh, proposal. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. I'm um, trying to stick to the four minutes, but um, just let me know once, we're, once we get to the Q&A if you have any questions about our project.
All right. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Uta from Oregon State University. Um, Oregon is a state that prides itself on being green, literally and figuratively. But there's always work to be done. So I'm going to give you one example. The background image on the screen in front of you um, of dumpster trash outside my library was taken by my library director last year, right around March finals. That daily reality exists in sharp contrast to one of my library's core values, that of sustainability. We say in our strategic plan that we are trusted stewards of our resources. And for me, that also means the resources that we discard. This image pushed me into action. And the first thing that I did was start a library staff composting program. Now, I just happened to be chair of our library staff association last year, and thus had a convenient and quite public platform by which to act. I made the argument for my library director and my fellow staff association members that food waste and other compostable material was already in the building, and that this initiative would reduce the giant trash pile the library generated each week. They all agreed, thankfully. Our campus recycling service provided signage. Um, they provided weekly pickup of a large outdoor compost cart. And they provided the starter indoor bucket that we used for collection. Um, the image of the compost bucket that you see on your screen was actually one that we purchased a little bit later because it had a foot pedal. We're 15 months into the program now, and I have a core group of about 11 volunteers that keeps our program going. I schedule them um, every term. To date, we've diverted 469 gallons of compostable material from the landfill. We've also composted about 110 pizza and wings boxes, and apparently our staff very much likes pizza. The success of this program motivated me to think bigger, a program for students and other library patrons. We did a waste audit um, in March of this year that showed um, just about 30% of our main floor trash is compostable. And the main floor is where our Learning Commons is located. This data inspired our Learning Commons coordinator to deploy a pilot pizza box composting program for students during dead and finals week of this past spring. That program involved leaflets, a Twitter post, word of mouth, and the use of a book truck. And it was put together in about 18 hours. And the program totally worked. 72 bulky pizza boxes went to composting rather than the landfill. So that was an awesome proof of concept um, and clearly showed that we could build um, on this. The bigger program that we're working on for this summer features centralized um, disposal bins. The image, uh, the last image on the screen in front of you is actually from Johns Hopkins um, University, Sheridan Libraries. And we're going to add some compost bins to those centralized disposal bins. When trash bins, recycling bins, and composting bins are co-located in a single space, rather than being spread throughout a space, which is very common, waste sorting compliance actually increases. And since the success of a composting program depends on effective waste sorting by our patrons, anything that encourages this behavior is helpful. I'm super excited about the expansion of our efforts. Um, I'm actually looking forward to the go-ahead um, by tomorrow. Um, I'm very much encouraged by the support of my supervisor, thank you Beth, um, and colleagues, and looking forward to helping move our library patrons toward more sustainable practices at OSU Libraries. So thank you very much, and I'm happy to take questions during the Q&A. Hello, everyone. Uh, I assume you all can hear me. Uh, I'm Elena Mons, and I did this project when I worked at Moraine Valley Community College right outside of Chicago. Uh, this was done last fall in November. And what happened was the first week of November, I saw some students come into the library with Ziploc bags filled with trash. And I thought, that's not something you see every day. It was gallon Ziploc bags. So. I found out that the Go Green Sustainability Club on campus had posed a challenge to their fellow students. They said, carry around any trash that you can't recycle or repurpose throughout an entire week. So you had to carry it with you everywhere you went. Went to class, to the library, you went out for coffee, everywhere. So having worked in sustainability, I thought, well, this would just be a fun project. I thought it was pretty savvy with all recycling. But then I thought, how can I put on my librarian hat and support this student project while doing a librarian's agenda, trying to uh, trying to get students to do proper research and realize what tools they have around them to help them research, especially when it comes to sustainability. 
So every day I took all my items out of my bag, I labeled, put little numbers by them, and I researched each individual item. I used various methods. Uh, sometimes I had to call manufacturers directly. Sometimes I had to look around uh, to see if they had a recycling symbol on them. And a lot of times, of course, the solution was not recyclable. Um, but when I was writing these blog posts, I personally wrote them very personal because I wanted to, it to come across as more of a fun project and as a personal experience versus just another librarian's post about how to do good research. So woven into my blog posts, I had links to uh, various resources. Some were academic, some were more popular. Um, and then anything I couldn't recycle, I would try to find creative ways to repurpose them. So I would go onto Instructables and Pinterest and cite some of those as well. Uh, as you can see, um, those are all my little items up there. And by the end of it, I was pretty disappointed just because um, I realized that uh, it was hard for me as someone who was in sustainability to get this down to find out a lot of this information. So how are students going to be able to find this information? But hopefully uh, they learned a lot and I got a lot of positive feedback from doing this project. Um, and let me see, that should be uh, about it. If anyone has any questions about the actual blog, uh, I recommend if you want to taking a look, there's the link to the blog project. Um, and I try to put in a lot of jokes and funny little uh, perspectives on uh, consumerism and how we use things throughout our day just because I want it to be entertaining for the students. I didn't want it to uh, be too dull. Um, but if anyone has any questions about this, feel free to contact me. In the Q&A, obviously. Tanya, are you going to start us off with the Q&A? It looks like people are just hey, doing everyone. that. Hello? Hello? Can people hear me? This is Tanya, and I'm just... Can people hear me? Yep, 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 we can hear you. Okay. Um, I'm, uh, well, <laughs> I'm inviting people to please post questions in chat. I noticed that we have, um, in addition to, can people still hear me? I'm not sure I'm... We can hear you. Okay, great. Um, we have a total of about 25 people online, so um, I don't know if it's easy as possible to allow people to unmute and ask questions, but uh, I am noticing the one question that I saw earlier was from a participant. Tracy asked if anyone has small indoor worm composters for a small staff kitchen, if anyone could speak to that phenomenon. Either post in chat or if you need to. Okay. I posted a response in chat. Okay, please share it for all to hear. Um, so I haven't done it at work. I've done worm composting at home. Um, I think it should work fine. The only thing I would say is that worms do need a varied diet, so they wouldn't probably be happy with just all coffee. Oh. But we, it works we, beautifully we, as a system. We do eat other food in the library, but we have a lot of coffee grounds, and I just always hate to toss them. And um, we also recycle, obviously, a lot of newspaper, and I know that those were two things that I've heard a lot about were in composting that you want to have. Yes, exactly. If you have a brand or anything that you're willing to share the URL, that would be great. Oh, right off the top of my head, I apologize. Um, I had I, We had purchased a, a commercial, you know, worm composting bin. I know that our campus recycling office does provide worm composter um, 
setups for offices that want to do worm composting, and I'm pretty sure they just use a bucket with holes in it. Fair enough. Okay. We have another question. Someone wants to know from all of the panelists if it's important to compost pizza boxes instead of uh, set, just simply sending them to the energy facility. Personally, I am in favor of diverting anything that can be diverted to compost. Um, that said, um, if it's trash energy, um, you know, obviously it's something's happening with it besides being buried in the ground. Um, but composting um, does work with, with pizza boxes, and they're so bulky um, that they actually will help you reduce the volume of trash that you're sending out every day. Great. I see um, Madeline has posted, uh, if you look in the chat, Madeline has posted, oh, I'm sorry. Let me ask, an, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble seeing who's doing what. Another question, moving on, apologize. I'm inelegant with this, everyone. Um, someone asked, for, this is to any panelist might respond, were you on your own? I'm making rabbit ears. You can't see me, but I'm making rabbit ears. Were you on your own as a department when you were Im implementing changes? Did you have university-wide departments that you could also consult with? And this would be um, in addition to I know one project you worked collaboratively with um, the agriculture department, but were you on your own? Could you speak to that? Anyone? So this is Uta at Oregon State. Um, I was not on my own. Um, we did have our campus recycling office um, supporting us in, uh, in this endeavor. So we were lucky there. This is Lisa. Um, I, I guess since I've already kind of alluded to the collaboration with the Ag Department, initially we had actually hoped that the um, Ag Department, um, the faculty member there would actually be the student kind of supervisor. Um, but when you're dealing with work study slots, it was kind of like, okay, well, this work study slot was within the library, and so uh, it didn't really work out that way, but she's been very um, accommodating to us as far as allowing the student to, you know, get training with the assistants there, and um, right now we're kind of um, about to expand the green spaces, and I'm sure that we'll also be able to kind of um, utilize that resource, the, the, um, the greenhouse space again when we do so. Anyone else? Um, I have a question for our panelists. Is there anything, maybe because we were going quickly, what have you, is there anything, like one thing that you maybe perhaps forgot to mention or didn't get a chance to tell us or you might want to kind of leave us with a parting thought? identify yourself and uh, let us know if you have something like that. Um, well, one thing I would say is uh, I thought it was really important to support the student project. Um, that's why I chose to do this blog project uh, was because a lot of the times I feel the students don't see that they can collaborate with faculty and staff, that it's not the students just saying, we really want recycling, we really want this, but they start to see that they're being heard and that the projects they're doing and what they're talking about is also being talked about in the library and among faculty and staff. A lot of times they don't realize um, that it can be a whole campus working together. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I chose to support them is um, so they knew they were being listened to, that it wasn't just a student challenge, but they were actually really excited that a librarian was going to participate in their challenge because they didn't expect anyone else aside from their peers to want to do something like this. So I would say definitely uh, if you're an academic, uh, listen to the students and try and support them. Thank you, Elena. 
So I'm going to actually follow up on Elena's comment and say um, I, I wholeheartedly support that. Um, what I didn't mention for the OSU program is that um, right after we started the staff composting program, one of our student workers asked if there would be composting for students in the library. Um, so that was a huge motivator for trying to take this project bigger. Um, and then we've also, I've also worked very closely with our um, student sustainability initiative um, students in developing what the bigger program is going to look like. So they, students on campus had uh, a significant voice um, in moving this project forward. Great. Okay, so collaboration sounds like that is um, key. Um, one last question, we're going to be moving into, uh, we want to hear from attendees about future for education uh, and efforts and learning more about sustainability. So if you could start teeing up any questions or comments you have about that, and for those of you who don't have mics, I will repeat them. But the question I see here is that, or comment, that um, someone noticed a slide featured recyclable cups and are there any collaborations that provide assistance with resources like that? So let, let that be our last question. Anyone have any? So uh, this is Uta at Oregon State. Um, so the only thing that I'll, I'll say in response to that is our campus food services have pretty much moved to all compostable um, serving where cups, uh, you know, forks and spoons, um, containers, um, and so the students are getting, or whoever buys food from the campus food services are getting uh, recyclable materials, so we're not necessarily having to purchase it for the library. Whenever we order coffee, it comes with recyclable cups. Okay. All right. So everyone, um, again, now please share with us what, you, what directions you might like to see this area um, see us pick up in the future with regard to online education and webinars or if you have general comments too, I'm sure we could pass those on. You can see the slide. And Madeline's just posted, asked, how can Sustain RT improve? What do you want help with? Okay. Well, you know what? We do have a web presence, and um, I don't know if I'm swift enough to get that to you, but we're also going to be um, enriching our web presence. So uh, I think that's a great that would be a great contribution to perhaps collect resources in one place. So if you have any suggestions for that. Please email. Say, wow, these are coming quickly. Hmm. People are asking about sample materials, getting involved or uh, advocating for sustainability in areas where there might be challenges to that. Uh, I think that um, perhaps Sustain RT could uh, do some education around self-education and sending, sending resources. But we will capture all of these ideas. We're a searchable public database, and uh, as Madeline mentioned earlier, we are doing an environment, environmental scan of successful activities. So I hear someone typing furiously. Um, so at that, ideally, that will be a resource that we can search. And Madeline has just posted in response to the question for graphic design experience that the outreach membership project team could use your help if you would like to volunteer to extend our efforts with that. 
someone has asked for a chance to talk about experience with campus food service and compostable supplies. And Madeline reminded you that you can share ideas on our Facebook page too. I will make a bid for undoing the, the Twitter feed. If you're not following us on Twitter and you want freshest advice from you, we're on the listserv about webinars, et cetera. But uh, in addition to following us on Facebook, please follow us on Twitter for updates and get other people to follow us and we'll follow you back. I'm going to do is see if I can. Okay, we have one more minute. And before we wrap up, I'm going to see if I can get our sustain RT uh, address up as a link in sight. Okay, so we are wrapping up in a minute. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that. Beth will finish off with a final slide. Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you. All right, here's the information. Just to wrap up at the end, the information that I pushed in the chat as well, um, and I will send out the recording to all those that attended. I can see our attendees are leaving now, and we hope you join us for the next one.